Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. For some reason, demon and skull t shirts, clothing, and accessories are sometimes popular. There's also pentagrams and scribblings in bizarre languages printed on t shirts. These things are printed backwards, and all of a sudden, these types of prints are becoming popular. All right. It depends from place to place. Some places you don't see it at all. And in other places, you see it being worn by a few people. And in other places, it is seen more frequently, i.e. you're seeing more of these skull t-shirts, uh, skull symbolisms on school bags, uh, pencil cases, headphones, satanic symbols, symbols of, 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 of Satanism, uh, images of Satan all that stuff. Plus, there's this whole marketing thing on Harry Potter, magic, vampires, and Dracula, and so on and so forth. Fashion trends change over time and place. What is trendy, fashionable, or popular today may not be popular or trending in another place, time, or era. Skull prints or even satanic demon prints on t-shirts, accessories, and other pieces of clothing is a reality. Music groups and companies use these types of images for marketing their brand services and products. How many music groups do you know in, in, in many different genres of music, especially in hip hop and rock and metal? And here we are in a world where people are becoming desensitized to this stuff. It becomes accepted by society and it integrates itself into everyday life. The bad thing you can see is a Muslim brother or sister wearing it or even wearing this type of clothing to the masjid. Even the people who buy, sell or wear these types of things don't even know that these things attract evil jinn shayateen and may make the angels fly away. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. But obviously, if you're wearing a t-shirt with a demon on it, you think the angels, malaika, will be around you? Is that what you want? If you wear these things or use these types of logos or images, yeah, things are mass produced and mass printed in China, we know. And then they're put in boxes and shipped, shipped to different locations for selling. It's business, but even selling this stuff becomes haram. You wearing it adds to its popularity. Understand that. You wearing it over your chest and your torso communicates that this is okay and acceptable. And that in itself sends the wrong message to others, younger or older, that this is fashionable when it is a deviation from Islam. Moreover, you buying this has an economic repercussion. You're letting the designer make money off this occult satanic symbolism, which in turn will allow him or her to mass produce more of this junk. Don't buy it. Don't give them your halal money so that they can produce more haram stuff. So here we are. The skull is used as a symbol of the occult, magic, sorcery, and witchcraft. Wake up and realize it. Don't support these types of symbols that will undeniably surround you with Iblis's friends, family, and followers. Realize that these are symbols in paganism, occultism, Satanism, and polytheism because some false deities in other religions, such as Hinduism, have deities wearing skulls. As a parent, protect your children by not purchasing these things. Some parents are so lost, they feel it is just pop culture or fashion or style or design without understanding the hidden esoteric behind it. To others out there who will argue with me or argue that wearing skull and satanic design tees, clothes and accessories is about the intention. You mistakenly perceive that these things are okay. You have no intention to attract evil and push away the angels. But that's what happens when you wear this kind of stuff or hang it on your walls. So don't just start thinking and, and giving yourself a false perception or a false 
uh, satisfaction to your mind that, oh, it's just my intention and I wasn't intending this. That's wrong. So anyone who tells you that, they're mistaken. And is this based on Quran and Sunnah? Ask yourself if your Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam Alayhi or his companions or the three generations, did they wear this kind of stuff? Of course, a Raqi who fights against these things will tell you that it brings jinn and shayateen without you even knowing it. A person practicing dark arts such as sorcery knows that you're attracting stuff. So remember the hadith, whosoever, whoever resembles a people is one of them. This is to do with something khas or specific that the disbelievers do. So if you emulate some action that the disbelievers are known to do, then it is a great sin. We are Muslims. We are not occultists. We are not Satanists. We are not Goths. We are not punks. We are not gangsters. And we are certainly not followers of pop culture trends. We do not need something that is related to these people. We have our way. Anas ibn Malik عن, saw a boy with his head shaved, leaving two braids or long locks. And he said, shave these or cut them, for this is the style of the Jews. Okay? Things which are specific to the non-Muslims, their style, fashion, are haram for a Muslim to copy. Some people will come with the argument that, yes, but occultists wear shoes and eat food and also use the internet. We Muslims also do the same things. Don't let these arguments fool you. I leave you with this ayat of Quran. A'udhu bin nasami anani min ash-shaytan ar-rajim wa lan tarda anka al-yahud wa lan nasara hatta tattabi'a millatahum qul inna hudallahi huwa al-huda wa la in ittaba'ta ahwa'ahum ba'da alladhi ja'aka min al-'ilmi ma laka min Allah min waliyan wa la nasir sadaq Allah al-'azim subhanak allahumma wa bihamdika ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين